Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. We're just going to give people maybe a minute to uh, log on because I did say that I'd be starting at the top of the hour. Just uh, let me know if you can see the captions. Okay, so Cloudflare claims that its mission is to, and I quote, build a better internet. Yet, both its actions and its inaction with regard to the hate site Kiwi Farms have made the internet far worse for members of marginalized groups. On today's stream, I'll explain how Cloudflare's content policy and its reporting policy are broken, and how customers of Cloudflare are directly supporting the harms that hate sites like Kiwi Farms perpetuate. Cloudflare says that it believes in privacy in personal data as a fundamental human right, and yet it protects those who repeatedly violate the privacy of hundreds, if not thousands, of transgender and neurodivergent people on the basis of, those mem of their membership in those groups. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, I figured I would introduce myself. Hi, my name is Liz, and thank you for joining. So I am a software developer, like many of you listening to this, um, although I do understand that there's a large number of non-software developers from the trans community here, journalists as well. Thank you for listening in. And also a special welcome to the folks who are from Kiwi Farms who are interested in what I have to say. So for the past five years, I've been a professional educator on everything cloud, DevOps, and large-scale systems. So I work in the same space that Cloudflare does, and I interact on a daily basis with people who are Cloudflare customers or who subscribe to services from competing uh, from competitors of Cloudflare. But I also happen to be transgender, and I've had my life negatively impacted by Cloudflare's actions in supporting Kiwi Farms. So as a software developer, as someone who's relatively senior in the field, I have plenty of money. I'm not asking you for money, but thank you for the people who have already covered the captioning costs for tonight and for Monday as well. And I'm also not trying to expand my audience. I already have plenty big of a platform to speak from. Um, I'm just trying to use it for some social good here. So I don't have anything personally to gain here. Honestly, the only thing that's going to happen from this is that I'm going to get targeted even more intensely by the people at Kiwi Farms who feel threatened by uh, me exposing what they're doing and what their, ho uh, what their hosting provider, Cloudflare, is helping them do. So I have everything to lose in terms of my safety and the safety of those dearest to me. So I'm hoping that this will have the impact that I want, which is change in Cloudflare's policies and change in Kiwi Farms' ability to harm people like me. So today we're going to be talking about Cloudflare's long history, going back almost a decade, of ignoring complaints about Kiwi Farms. And this has happened both as a matter of individual operational practice at the abuse department level, as well as the philosophical libertarian statements made by Cloudflare's executives. And I'm going to be talking about how Cloudflare has exacerbated harm towards marginalized communities, not just by ignoring complaints from those of us who are negatively impacted by Kiwi Farms, but also from Cloudflare forwarding complaints made by marginalized groups directly to the Kiwi Farms admins, causing people to get doxxed and harassed even further in retaliation. Today, we're going to be dismantling Cloudflare's arguments that free speech for everyone is a public good, or that they're a public utility that is obligated to provide service to anyone uh, who, who asks. And we'll also be talking about their statement that no one should get to decide what stays on the internet, that everything should be fair game on the internet. But first, for the sake of people who are joining for the first time, let's recap briefly what we discussed on the previous episode. Last time, we talked about the psychological torture inflicted by members of Kiwi Farm upon people who are transgender and autistic. So by and large, what Kiwi Farms' sole purpose is to do is to act as a watering hole for sadistic individuals who want to get reactions out of marginalized people 
and to be able to coordinate harassing those people and getting them fired from their jobs, making them unable to pay rent or keep a roof over their heads, making their family members miserable, and ultimately taunting them that the only way that they can end this is by taking their own lives. That is what Kiwi Farms does, and it tears apart the lives not just of those individuals, but it tears apart the transgender and the neurodivergent communities as a whole because it makes it harder for people to find support for fear of coming into this spider web of this trap of being stuck, having people picking apart every aspect of your life and trying to get anyone who has anything to do with you to disassociate themselves from you. So that is what Cloudflare has steadfastly supported for almost a decade. So Cloudflare has offered several defenses as to why they are, why they are doing this, why they think that it is, it is something that they can reconcile with building a better internet. The idea that Cloudflare is just a neutral service provider that is providing equal protection to everyone. That I, as a trans person, have a right to free Cloudflare services, and that Kiwi Farms has a right to free Cloudflare services too. But I don't think that this is a, a, a great argument because equal does not create equality of outcomes, and specifically equity of outcomes. Because not all speech is equal, right? If you are going to bat to protect speech that is inordinately harmful, and you're not mitigating the impacts of that speech, no amount of, of speech by the people being targeted is necessarily going to prevent the harm being done. So as I just told you, the speech that, that Kiwi Farms engages in is not just kind of a neutral marketplace of ideas saying about, you know, subjects like, you know, should insurance cover trans care, right? Like, you know, sure, that might be a legitimate subject for political debate, right? But in this case, the subject being debated is should trans people in general have the right to exist? And not only that, what Kiwi Farms' speech contends is that individual trans people that they're targeting should not have employment, should not have housing, and should be terrorized until they commit suicide. That's the kind of speech that Kiwi Farms advocates. Now, imagine for a moment that, you know, let's, let's wind the clock back to medieval times, right? Let's, let's imagine that Cloudflare is a, manufacture, is a blacksmith, that they're manufacturing swords. And some people already are, you know, knights who are covered in armor, right? Who can well and truly survive being slashed with a sword. So if Cloudflare says, you know, we sell swords on an equal basis to anyone who wants to use them, and you have all the people who are knights who are picking up swords who are like, rah, yes, let's go and kill all of these trans people, right? And you've got trans people who don't have any, any, any defenses, right? Who, who do not have body armor, who frankly don't even want to be fighting this fight, right? Like, we don't want to take up swords. We just want to be allowed to live our lives and be left alone, right? So the result of this kind of equality of who you sell to and ignorance of what people are going to use these weapons for, right? Like, I, I think that is a very, very, um, it, it's a very, very crude argument, right? To basically say, I don't, you know, uh, the, the other phrasing for this that I've heard is the uh, German rocket scientist, right? Who, who said, you know, I just make the rockets, the rockets go up, I don't care where they come down, right? I, I think that's kind of the libertarian attitude that Cloudflare leadership has taken for many years. This idea that the only cure for hate speech is more speech. But I don't think that's true because these equal rules do not create equal outcomes. All they result is a, is a massacre of the people who have the least power. Because no amount of free Cloudflare for me will make me feel safe to publish a blog about the harms that Kiwi Farms does, right? If I publish a blog about the harms that Kiwi Farms does, that's going to paint a, uh, uh, you know, paint a target on my back, right? And today, yes, I am speaking up, but like, I would have been scared as hell 
to post anything against Kiwi Farms, you know, had I heard of them in 2015, 2016. In 2017, when I was targeted, right, like, I did not directly respond to Kiwi Farms. I did not try to raise awareness of them very much at the time because I knew that was just going to make everything worse. Right? As long as my home address is posted on Kiwi Farms, as long as people are making violent threats against me, as long as I'm afraid for my life, there's no amount of free Cloudflare service to prevent my uh, to prevent my website from going down under denial of service attack, right? Like I'm not concerned about denial of service attacks. I'm concerned about someone taking a gun and shooting at it, shoot, shooting me with it through my bedroom window while I'm sleeping. So, you know, I I could have I guess hired a private security guard, except for hiring a private security guard or a team of them to watch my residence twenty four seven. If I were to you know publish such such a blog, right, that would have cost me a thousand dollars per day, right? That's a lot of money, and I'm relatively well off. Think about all of the trans people that Kiwi Farms has targeted. Getting a blog public uh, that's protected by Cloudflare, that's not going to get them their jobs back. Never mind getting them any sense of physical semblo- any any semblance of physical safety. So you might say, okay, but you know this clearly this, it's clearly this isn't Cloudflare's problem, right? Right? Like, isn't making sure that people aren't violent toward each other a government concern? Shouldn't the government be intervening here? And I think that this is hilarious when it comes from libertarians, because people who are libertarians are people who advocate often for dismantling government services and making fewer and fewer things the government's problem, right? So saying that, you know, let's give more responsibility to the government to keep everyone safe and keep the peace, I think that's really, really disingenuous. Um, As I talked about last time, uh, police agencies, intelligence agencies, they do not know how to handle complex anonymous stalking cases like this. And they offer very little support for even situations like, hi, I would like to not be murdered by cop, thank you very much, right? I don't even want you to investigate these people who are, who are like, who are trying to assassinate my reputation. I just care about them calling on a false report, right? Like, and the police at the time had no idea how to, how to deal with that. And yeah, as a commenter is saying, it sounds like Cloudflare provides their services to everybody, but the people who benefit the most are the people who shouldn't have them. Exactly, exactly so. So I think there's another angle, though, to the kind of police protection, why doesn't the government get involved angle, which is that the people that are targeted are the people who are least likely to trust the police, to honestly benefit from the police getting involved, right? Imagine if you are a black trans woman who is working as a sex worker. Do you really think that the police are going to help you rather than lock you up for engaging in sex work, right? Like going to the cops only works if you are a cis white rich person with with some amount of structural power. Like honestly, what happened this afternoon as I was writing this script Right? Like, it took a congresswoman getting a false police call saying that someone was being murdered in her bathtub. And the cops showed up, and thankfully, and like what happened to Keppels, right? Like, they, you know, I, do, I, do, I do not like Mar- MTG's politics, but I also don't want to see her physically hurt, right? And thankfully, the cops knocked on her door rather than uh, showing up with, with assault rifles pointed at her like they did to Keffels, right? But that is what happened, is that this kind of stochastic terrorism happens, and depending upon the level of power that you have, you will or you won't get believed about whether or not there is a serious risk to your life, whether it be from strangers or from the cops themselves. And there's very unlikely to be any investigation into where these threats are coming from, and you're not going to succeed at getting a injunction or restraining order ordering these people to stop because they're deliberately anonymous because Cloudflare is shielding the host and also the host is deliberately not keeping logs about people's identities such that they could be uh, such that they could be prosecuted so that in a, it basically summarizes why i feel that kind of equal service provision creates unjust and unequal outcomes, 
that can't really be compensated for by kind of having having government intervention and kind of tr tr treating this as an externality of what Cloudflare is doing. There's another interesting uh, argument with regards to Cloudflare, where Cloudflare says that, um, you know, number one, they are a service that's subject to, uh, to CDA 230, uh, the Communications Decency Act, and therefore that they have broad liability shields um, from, from hosting or relaying content. But they go even further than that, and they say not only do we not host, not only do we, do we, do we not like, have liability as, some, as, as a host of the content, we don't even host the content in the first place, right? They claim that what they are doing is merely acting like your internet service provider and just letting the bits transit the wire over them, but that the ultimate source for all of those bits, where to be clear, those bits specifically consist of text messages and image macros and photos that are encouraging people to commit violence against trans people, but they say, you know, oh, this is just neutral provision of an internet service. And I think that on a technical level, this is sophistry. That you as a Cloudflare customer probably don't want the bits of your website that Cloudflare is caching for you, like, you know, the uh, logo of your website or maybe some of the JavaScript with your single page web app, right? Like that you do not want that to be co-located with caching the same bits as the uh, Christchurch mosque shooting video. But that's exactly what Cloudflare is doing today. Cloudflare, sure, is not the canonical place where the, uh, where the Christchurch mosque shooting video lives, but it still is part of how Cloudflare makes running Kiwi Farms affordable to the people who, who own it, is that they are keeping copies of those bits closer to where users might access them in order to make it so that there are fewer bandwidth costs associated with the uh, origin server. And Cloudflare has also slowly been moving up the stack to support directly hosting more and more content within their servers so that less and less needs to go to the origin. For instance, Cloudflare workers are a serverless technology that allows clients to not just you know have their bits cached alongside other customers, but to actually perform computation and generation of web pages uh, on on Cloudflare servers. Now, I'm not alleging that uh, Kiwi Farms is using Cloudflare workers. Um, as far as I know, Cloudflare is only providing denial of service protection and caching. But I think that there is a business and reputational risk to Cloudflare to allow Kiwi Farms to have their bits cached on Cloudflare and to store those bits that are are tremendously harmful uh, when they are used to incite violence, to store those bits alongside their other paying customers. And at the end of the day, the outcome that I care about is that if Kiwi Farms wants to find a host that is willing to that is willing to serve them, that is willing to allow their bits to go out over the wire, right? Like, so be it. But I think that it is a choice that companies make who they deal business with. And it is a choice of, you know, whether to provide denial of service protection to uh, Kiwi Farms or whether to provide, um, whether provide caching services to, to Kiwi Farms, right? Whether Cloudflare wants to actively insert itself to decrease the cost to serve this, this website, as well as to absorb denial of service attacks that are already being directed at Kiwi Farms. Like, Cloudflare doesn't have to do that. It could get itself out of the way and say, you know what, we don't want to provide denial service protection to this. That's a choice that they can make at any time. So this gets to the next point, which is that people often raise, you know, but what about the First Amendment? Or what about the obligation to provide service to, to anyone, right? So to this I say, Cloudflare is not a monopoly. It's not a government. It has competition. If Cloudflare chooses not to do business with a particular with a particular uh, origin server, that origin server can choose to do business with other with other providers, right? For instance, I happen to know that KiwiFarms.ru that that is being serviced by a Russian uh, denial of service protection company, right? So there's no reason that that Cloudflare needs to think that it is the only thing standing behind, you know, Kiwi Farms being up or down. I think it's, I think, I don't think it's a binary. I think, I think that there are degrees to which Kiwi Farms is economical to operate. 
and that individual providers of services should make choices about what they condone on their platform and what is too far. What is a violation of their terms of service that they think either is not morally or ethically okay, or that is costing them too much, whether it be in terms of volume of attacks absorbed, whether it be in terms of bad PR, whether it be in terms of their other customers canceling contracts over this, right? Like, I think that at the end of the day, Cloudflare is a business and that Cloudflare's shareholders may not like it if Cloudflare is adhering to this policy of keeping Kiwi Farms on just for the sake of the, uh, of the executive leadership's libertarian beliefs. I think there's another interesting analogy to draw here, which is that the process of getting banned from Wikipedia is very interesting. Um, I'm a bureaucracy nerd. Um, I haven't actually been banned from Wikipedia, but I've you know researched some of their community practices. And there's this really cool thing that if you get banned from Wikipedia, if you can find any admin who is willing to reinstate you, you will be reinstated, right? And then, you know, sure, other admins might talk to that admin to make sure that they're on the same page. But at the end of the day, if you are banned from Wikipedia, you can appeal via any admin and any admin can reinstate you. You only wind up being permanently banned from Wikipedia if your conduct is so egregious that no Wikipedia administrator is willing to, to listen to your, uh, to your appeal and reinstate you. And I think that's how the internet ought to work, right? Like that the internet ought to be decentralized, that there should be the freedom of many different providers making their own choices, but also that those providers' choices having consequences for the provider's reputation. So I don't think that Cloudflare has a obligation to keep Kiwi Farms online because it's the only game in town, because it is not the only game in the town. It just happens to be the only major CDN provider that is willing to provide service to Kiwi Farms at this time, aside from, you know, dodgy providers in, in Russia or in, or in other uh, states that don't care about uh, freedom of expression and, and uh, protecting you from hate speech. So what Kiwi Farms is doing here is Kiwi Farms is causing Cloudflare to spend resources, like amplifying its voice and defending it, right? So I don't think the argument about freedom of speech is comes into play here, right? Cloudflare is a private company and Cloudflare can make a business decision to cut off a customer that is causing it too much pain. Freedom of speech does not require others to amplify your speech, right? The only thing freedom of speech says, the First Amendment says, is that, you know, you have a right to, you know, stand up on a soap, on a soapbox in a public park and, and that doesn't require other people to listen to you. That doesn't require other people to give you a megaphone. Right. All it means is the government cannot come in and intervene and stop you from uh, stop you from from saying the thing in the first place. There's another argument that people often bring in saying, you know, oh, but don't we have to serve every customer equally? And to that, I answer like you are allowed to have a dress code as a restaurant. Right. No shoe, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Right. Like, yes, there are some categories that are protected. Like, you cannot deny service to someone, or at least since Jim Crow ended, you cannot deny service to someone uh, on the basis of their race or on their gender identity or on their religion, right? Like, those are the protections in the United States, at least, that we've agreed upon are bases for saying that you have to give equal service to people who are members of specific groups. But transphobia and hate speech is not a protected class. Right. To me, it's actually the opposite of that. Right. Because it instead of enhancing freedoms and enhancing people's ability to participate in society as members of a marginalized group, it's the opposite. It's it's diminishing the ability of people to participate in society. You are allowed to as a business and as an individual to choose who you do and don't associate with. There's also another straw person that basically says something like this, right? Like that, sure, Kiwi Farms is unpopular, but aren't sex workers unpopular? Aren't trans people unpopular too? What if they come after trans people or sex workers next? But that doesn't hold water because recently Cloudflare took down the Mastodon for sex workers, uh, which was called Twitter. 
And Cloudflare, you know, said, you know, hey, like we have an obligation because, you know, we uh, are subject to CDA 230, that CDA 230 says that, um, as amended by Sestin Fosta, says, says that we have to, uh, we are potentially liable for sex trafficking that happens uh, on our platform. But I find this really interesting for two reasons. That number one, I didn't see any signs that Cloudflare fought this, right? They just they just dropped Twitter. But number two, you would think that Cloudflare would employ the same sophistry that they did when we confronted them about Kiwi Farms and say, oh, you know, we don't host the material, we just cache it, or we just denial of service protect it, right? Like, you would think that they, if they were so inclined on defending to the death and litigating um, free speech, that they would go to bat for sex workers, but they didn't. So I think that says that you cannot count on Cloudflare to protect sex workers and protect trans people. You just cannot. So I think that slippery slope argument of first they came for Kiwi farms and then they came for, for trans people and sex workers. No, it doesn't work that way. They already came for sex workers, right? And Cloudflare did nothing. And, and now you're expecting us to defend Kiwi farms because it might help sex, work, sex workers. I don't think that that's true. So finally, let's talk about how Cloudflare has, even if you accept the notion that, you know, okay, Cloudflare is obligated to accept anyone as a client, Cloudflare is obligated to serve them as long as they don't, you know, receive notice that there's like copyright infringement or something else going on. So how does Cloudflare respond when you send them a complaint saying, that someone has, for instance, violated your copyright or someone is engaging in a violation of their human rights policy. What happens then? Well, Cloudflare's stance, again, goes to this sophistry of, um, you know, what do we host versus what do we proxy? And they say that if you are filing a complaint about something that they only proxy or cache, that it's up to the backend provider to take that down and that Cloudflare is just this kind of neutral service provider that is just making the internet fast for everyone. And that if you haven't complained first to the backend provider, they're not going to listen to you. And I think that this is really, really dangerous because this rule was written in a world where the internet was a lot smaller, right? In the 1990s, in the early 2000s, you could generally trust that, aside from some particularly bad corners of the internet, that every systems engineer on the internet was someone like myself, someone who was doing their best to keep bad actors at bay, and that if there was something bad going on, that we just had to be notified about it, and of course we'd take it offline right away. So, you know, yeah, sure, it didn't make sense to swat the, um, to swat the fly with, with this big giant hammer, if you could just go and quietly talk to the admin who didn't realize that, that this was what they were hosting, right? So this goes back to the world of kind of what I would characterize as the good faith internet um, of, of the 1990s and 2000s. But today we operate in a very different environment because what if the backend provider is one and the same as those creating the hate content? So I'd like you to meet 1776 Solutions LLC, which is obviously kind of a um, kind, kind of this this appeal to you know fuck yeah America like you know First Amendment. But do you know what it was called before it was called that? It was called Final Solutions Hosting. No Holocaust promotion or anti-Semitism here. No way, right? So. In a case like this, no amount of complaining to the backend host will get them to take the content down. What's actually happening is the, uh, right, the image macro of Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man, right? Like that, that's what's happening. Is that you go to Cloudflare, Cloudflare says complain to the backend host. We, you know, we, we just proxy the content. If you really want it offline, you need to talk to the backend host, right? Okay, I go talk to the backend host and then, uh, then Joshua Moon himself gets the complaint. And then what he proceeds to do, as I detailed on Monday's stream, is they'll do Darvo, right? Uh, that they'll reverse the victim and offender and accuse you of being the real person who is harassing them. And they'll start attacking you even harder. Now, fortunately, in my case, 
Cloudflare did disclose to me that, you know, I had the choice of whether or not to have it forwarded on to Josh Moon, and I, and, and I chose not to. Um, but for a period of time, Cloudflare was infamous for passing complaints on directly to the backend provider, regardless of whether or not you wanted to have them sent along. They didn't even tell you that they were going to send it along. And this would cause you to be really surprised as someone filing this complaint uh, because it would include all the personally identifying information. Like, you know, maybe you said, you know, please contact me in this phone number if you want to discuss this case or, hey, you know, you know, here's the email that you use to contact Cloudflare. Um, and also, right, like a, take, a takedown request or a, a abusive content request typically contains information on what the offending content is. So guess what, right? Like Cloudflare, uh, sorry, Kiwi Farms are a group of bullies. They thrive on getting reactions out of people. They want to find what pushes your buttons and push those buttons more. So guess what? If you send to Cloudflare a list of the things that push your buttons the most and they forward it directly onto Kiwi Farms, guess what's going to happen? Kiwi Farms is going to produce even more content like the content that you complained to Cloudflare about, right? So there's no winning here that if you don't complain, it just goes on. And if you do complain, you get harassed even harder with material that has been custom tailored to correspond to your personal hell. So at least in the past year or two, um, I do hear that Cloudflare has at least been more transparent that you do have a choice on whether or not to pass the information onto the back end, but they are still routing to dev null any complaints that you refuse to have passed on to, to Joshua Moon. But I think that this is, you know, willful negligence by, by Cloudflare, that Cloudflare has been receiving all of these complaints, well aware of what all of the content of these complaints is, and they're saying, it's not my problem, I have nothing to do with this, I don't care about what harms are, are happening. That's fundamentally what's happening, right? Cloudflare says it is up to the backend host what they choose to host or not, and we refuse to, to put ourselves into the middle and make this decision, and we don't care how many people get hurt. And this is not just what's happening at the lowest levels of the company. So in 2017 and 2018, my legal counsel drafted uh, extensive documentation of violations of Cloudflare's terms of service, and we sent it to the Cloudflare trust and safety team. No one from the Cloudflare trust and safety team would meet with me about this. They just asked, do you want this passed on to Kiwi Farms? I said no, and they said, well, we can't investigate. We're not going to do anything. And this was despite clearly documented harm to transgender people and attempts to intimidate the transgender community into not existing, into intimidating trans people into committing suicide. So, yeah, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's really a lot. Um, so what could Cloudflare do differently? If Cloudflare says that it wants to create a better internet, how could Cloudflare actually create a better internet? What works for actually promoting access to speech for everyone, not just for those who already hold the most structural power? For me, improving speech and the ability of marginalized communities to speak up has to start with safety for us. That if we are not safe to speak in the first place, then I'm not even worried about denial of service attacks. I'm just worried about whether I'm going to be murdered for saying the things that I'm saying, right? So speech that is just magnifying or creating new online harassment, that doesn't add to the amount of free speech. It takes away from the amount of free speech. It intimidates people from using their voice. And I know I've taken a little bit of heat, heat on this for, for, call, for calling Matthew the CEO of Cloudflare a white supremacist, but I'll walk that back and I'll say that it is a white supremacist outcome from letting racialized people take the brunt of everyone else's free speech that are just asking questions about whether we have lower IQs, about whether we really deserve to live, the free speech about, you know, did the Holocaust really happen, right? Like, I think that that this creates outcomes that are white supremacist when you foster hate speech and when you do not offer physical safety protections for those who are speaking up against hate speech. It is a transphobic outcome from letting trans people be repeatedly dehumanized for there to be stochastic terrorism, calls for us to be murdered, for our doctors to be killed, 
for us to be tortured, right? That if your idea of free speech is that people should be able to advocate for violence against other groups and that there's evidence of that actually being carried out, I think that you have no soul at that point. Even if the people in charge of Cloudflare don't believe that they're white supremacist or transphobic, the policy outcomes that their libertarian ideology promotes are white supremacist and transphobic. And they will result in a form of genocide if this continues. So if you're working at Cloudflare, this is what the outcome of your technical work is. You are holding up a system that is designed to, by policy, harm marginalized groups and turn and 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 turn a deaf ear to that, um, or to use a less ableist analogy, right? Like to 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 ignore our pleas for any kind of decency or help or support. So building a better internet starts by making the safety for people to speak up without fear of retaliation and harm. That's how we get there, not just by giving everyone more and more deadly tools to promote genocide. So where does this leave us today on Wednesday, August 24th at 6.36 p.m.? Well, Cloudflare has at least intervened to stop transphobic messages from appearing on the custom error page shown when the Kiwi Farms origin server is offline. There was originally a documented message that basically said that the um, trend, or sorry, that the Kiwi Farms backend servers have committed suicide, like the 41% of trans people who allegedly have attempted suicide. And that was an error message that was being served directly from Cloudflare servers because it was uploaded to Cloudflare as a custom error message. That's gone. That's been taken offline. So clearly, Cloudflare at least has some bright line. So they're not completely free speech absolutists there. Um, but I think now we need to get some amount of revisiting of the policies and looking at, okay, what happens if Cloudflare is proxy and content that is far worse than, you know, just cracking jokes about trans people committing suicide and goes even worse to the point of actually inciting harassment of trans people to commit suicide, right? Like, I, I hope that Cloudflare will do the right thing. So already we're starting to see signs of instability in the Kiwi Farms backend. Um, personally, I do not condone people um, doing vigilante justice. Like, I honestly... Rather than seeing Kiwi Farms end through denial of service attacks, I would rather that it just become financially unsupportable for Kiwi Farms to operate. So if Kiwi Farms takes additional measures to deny Kiwi Farm, or sorry, if Cloudflare takes additional measures to deny Kiwi Farms service over the coming days, in particular, if, if Cloudflare stops shielding uh, Joshua Moon from the bandwidth bill of serving all of the screenshots of trans people's messages from all of the image macros uh, wishing death upon trans people, all of the uh, all of the memes that po that are uh, advocating for for uh, eradication of trans people, if it costs Joshua Moon the full bandwidth cost to serve each and one of these images every single time it's fetched, rather than only the first time, I think that that will endanger the cost economics of Kiwi Farms and make it much more costly for them to operate. What I would like to see happen is that Joshua Moon makes a decision to, to take the site down, to step away from it, and to realize that it is not going to be a profitable endeavor for him to do this, that the set of people that want to partake in this behavior is too small, and that even if he does find somewhere else to host it, that he's not ever going to be able to poison and character assassinate trans people's lives through Google web search results. So, Cloudflare, please do the right thing. I don't want to have to be here explaining all of the ways that you have failed me personally and my community over the past decade. I have friends who work at Cloudflare, right? Like, I have plenty of reasons to be excited about things that Cloudflare is building, but I cannot in good conscience support your services as long as you are protecting the people who are trying to kill me. So if Cloudflare does not take meaningful action by Friday, on Friday at this same time, 6 p.m., we'll be talking about how to hit Cloudflare in the pocketbook where it hurts. 
how to switch from Cloudflare to a different service provider, or at least to cost them as much money as possible if you continue to use their free tier. I want Cloudflare's investors and I want Wall Street to notice that this is not a sustainable business policy for Cloudflare and that no amount of innovation is going to make up for the bad reputation that they're garnering with every day that this goes on and that Cloudflare's customers are going to benefit from, from having an, a mass exodus of customers from Cloudflare. For now, I encourage you to talk to your platform team, or if you're a member of the platform team, to talk to your Cloudflare rep if you're a customer. Tell them that you are unhappy with the fact that your services are being cached on the same, service, uh, on the same servers as Kiwi Farms content is being hosted. And tell them that this is going to be a deal breaker for you at next contract renewal. If you're working at Cloudflare, I encourage you to join in on the internal pressure to ban Kiwi Farms as a customer. Please don't let your site and your traffic and your labor to be used as a human shield that protects a group of people that are bullies that wish harm upon transgender and neurodivergent people. So. I'm hoping not to have to do this, but if I do, see you on Friday. And now I'll be taking a few questions from the chat if people have, have questions. Uh, yes, uh, Ghostly Newt points out that internal advocacy can have material impacts. Uh, yes, I have a range of talks and kind of uh, playbooks for, for doing this that I've spoken about over the years. Um, there is one recorded talk that I think is up on InfoQ. Um, but essentially, the ways that you pressure your company internally are collective worker solidarity and pressure. That at the end of the day, Cloudflare is run by its employees. Cloudflare would not function without its employees doing R&D and maintenance. And if that those employees are willing to say that, we're, that they're going to step away, the company is not going to succeed. Uh, scrolling, scrolling back, um, someone asks about hate speech as defamation uh, or kind of, is there a clear and present danger of violence? Um, I think that this is one of the tricky areas where, unfortunately, uh, Kiwi Farms knows how to ride the line just carefully enough. And even if there were some kind of private cause for action of, you know, of defamation, right? Like the problem is you would have to find out not just, um, you know, you would not just have to serve Kiwi Farms. You would have to find out which individual user had posted that message because of the protections of CDA 230, which say that um, Joshua Moon enjoys the protections of CDA 230 in theory, because he's operating a, you know, he's he's not responsible for the content that his users post. Now, I think that he has made some mistakes there. I don't think that he actually has CDA 230 protection because he is the one who is editing the banners on the top of every single uh, Kiwi Far popular Kiwi Farms thread. That kind of, you know, that's an editorial choice that he has made to summarize what his users are doing and to kind of perpetuate the mo you know what he thinks are going to be the most impactful um character slanders or assassinations against people right for instance allegations that um that keffels is going to use the money that she's raised for you know some nefarious purpose rather than for her own genuine physical safety right like that's something that he has chosen to promote in the header of of keffels thread and i think that is a indication that he is not just a neutral moderator who's doing his best to kind of remove content that is that is that is kind of grievously offensive that he is actually participating in it um but still regardless right like i don't think that you're going to find money in his shell corporation i don't think an injunction is necessarily going to help you or even if you could get one right like I, this is a matter where the people who most need these legal remedies do not have the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it needs to sue um so uh, Jarhel asks, uh, how can a company make the general endpoint that we're not just serving the bits, we're, we're just transmitting them? Um, you know, what about the kind of overall supply chain? What about their knowing participation? I, I agree. I think the kind of knowing participation is a, is a thing that is most uh, damning for them, right? The fact that they have been told repeatedly for over seven years that this is happening and they haven't done anything. Um, I do think that, you know, your, you know, your ISP, whether it be TELUS, whether it be, um, 
Telstra, if you're in Australia, whether it be Comcast, Verizon, right? Like those people, I think genuinely are um, people who are just transmitting the bits. Um, but I think that in Cloudflare's case, what they are doing to kind of specifically ha specifically configure things for Kiwi Farms, right? I think that goes beyond. I'm just routing IP traffic. I think that goes to them directly facilitating making it easier for Kiwi Farms to do what they do. Let me scroll back further through the chat. Um, uh, there was a question of, you know, do the trust and safety team at uh, Cloudflare do absolutely nothing? No. The trust and safety team at Cloudflare do respond to copyright complaints, right? As it turns out, copyright complaints are something that Cloudflare could be held legally liable for unless they respond, right? That's what the DMCA is. Um, so remember, a trust and safety team's job is to defend the company's bottom line. And what we need to do is we need to show that it impacts the, co the company's bottom line to not respond to these complaints. Um, yeah, there's the uh, discussion about, um, about, you know, impacts of, of doxing and swatting. I think, yeah, definitely one thing about doxing and swatting is that I don't think that doxing is a good thing in general. I don't think that swatting is a good thing. I think no one should get swatted, right? I think that use of the police to harm someone is really, really incredibly bad and exacerbates uh, systematic injustices. But as we saw with MTG getting swatted with just a door knock versus Keffel's getting a gun pointed in her face, you know, I worry that me as someone who is not white, right, like, you know, that that that, that goes even worse for me, right? Like there is a range in outcomes that result depending upon what someone looks like. That police, historically, have behaved very differently uh, when responding to people of different, uh, of different backgrounds. Um, let's see, there's a pointer to Jonathan Zunger's uh, piece that uh, tolerance is not a moral precept. Yes, I highly recommend it. It's on medium.com, really, really strongly recommend that. Um, cool. I think that's most of the questions from the from the chat. Um, so thank you very much for joining in. Um, and oh, one last question: uh, What meaning is a symbolic victory if Kiwi Farm switches to a different denial of service host? Um, likely, they're going to go to their denial of service host in Russia. And well, with the way that the um, war instigated by Russia is going, I would not be surprised if Russia kind of becomes kind of like North Korea, right? That they're just, you know, disconnected from a lot of the internet, that a lot of the kind of connections in and out of Russia go down and that there's less bandwidth available. So, you know, I think I think that certainly not having, you know, Cloudflare's um, CDN services do enhance people's Google search rank rating, right? Like it says so right on their documentation, right? So I think switching to an alternative provider at least causes that to be less harmful, right? I think that switching off of Cloudflare will definitely hurt the reliability of Kiwi Farms um, because Cloudflare right now is able to absorb large attacks because it's commingling all of that traffic together with all of its legitimate uh, clients, uh, clients' capacity. All right. Well, um, that's what I have to share with you today. Um, take care, stay safe out there, and I hope to not see you on Friday, but if I do, I will see you on Friday at 6 p.m. for how to switch off of Cloudflare. Cheers, everyone.